Okay. Here. Hi. Sorry, don't let me take that. My bad. Wait, let me just. Okay, there. Okay, so I'll be um passing the audio and video now to Don. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for being here tonight. I know you could have been elsewhere, and I'm happy to be a part of your evening. The last time I was listening to a talk like this, I was also in the shower. So <laughs> it's very convenient to have these workshops now where we can just listen from the comforts of our own home. The past weeks, Charmaine and Jet, they've been um, organizing talks like this, and I find them very useful for a lot of us. Topics from multimedia, to finance, to politics, and then uh, photography and all that. And then tonight, um, organizing your space. Now, I find that um, this topic is very relatable to a lot of people because we all have spaces somehow. Uh, regardless of size, regardless of status, we all have a space we call our own. You know? And um, so before anything, I'd like to thank Charm for inviting me tonight, for giving me an avenue to share something I love to all of you. <laughs> there. So thank you, Charm, and thank you for doing this for a lot of us. Okay, so without further ado, let me start. So organizing your space, tips to a more organized and inspiring personal space. Okay, so um, before, uh, before I jump straight to the topic, allow me to introduce myself. Um, a lot of you who have probably seen me speak, I've probably seen these slides, so <laughs> I try to make it default um, most of the time. So I graduated uh, with a degree in architecture from USC in 2011, and I worked as an intern um, at Espina Cares Espina and Associates and in Ayala Land Inc for two years. And um, there I got a bit of training, um, training about um, land development and zoning and everything, interiors, exteriors, buildings, uh, structures and all that. In 2013, I became a sworn and licensed architect. And um, I joined uh, UAP Subbu, which I'm currently a part of until now. And um, Straight off, straight off my oath taking, I worked for a Japanese furniture company um, where I learned a lot about detailing and material manipulation and all that. Um, we supplied um, furniture for cafes and restaurants and hotels all around Tokyo. My interests are obviously uh, multidisciplinary design, which you'll see later, um, a bit of fashion, travel, which we are not allowed to do right now, <laughs> and performing arts. So currently, I work as, a, uh, as the founder and principal architect of Atelier de Aurora. Um, this is um, our design studio, architecture design studio. I see somebody here who's from, who's from the studio also. I'd like to say a shout out to Axi. <laughs> Hi, Ax. And um, also, um, I am one of the co-founder and I co-run, co-everything, <laughs> Blind Clothing from 2013 to now. My sister is here too. She runs it with me. Hi, Nins. There. So, um, okay. Just so I'm a bit believable. So, these are a couple of um, articles that you have probably seen about me. So, it's all about um, style meets structure, cloth and concrete, uh, designing with purpose. It's about business, fashion forecasts. Um, I've also represented in a couple of, um, how do you call this, <laughs> civilian-based fashion shows, things like that. I was also lucky to be one of the 30, um, 30 people chosen by Sunstar in their um, Movers, Mavericks, and Makers um, issue in the 30th anniversary. So a little bit about line clothing. So this is a clothing line that me and my sister run. So we produce um, pieces. We design and produce pieces made in Cebu. And we also curate uh, pieces, uh, imported pieces. There. So we used to sell in Zalora. We stopped. We, used, we, we do pop-ups. We kind of held off on this for a while because we got really busy with me with the practice and her with med school. 
and now we've just gotten back at it. Thank, thank God for ACQ. You know, we've had a lot of time to spend together and pursue this. So this was since 2013 up to today, with a five, with a like maybe three year, four year hold in between. And this is um, our architectural design firm, multidisciplinary design firm. So we do furniture, interiors, architecture, um, everything, everything under the sun. So this is my team right now, and this is our office under construction. We just turned five years uh, this year. And we were supposed to move in this month, but nope. <laughs> All our plans are on hold, as with everybody else's. So you, we, uh, in the office, we do a lot of interior fit outing. You may be familiar with some of these establishments. So we love working with brands in the same amount of way we love working with people. Uh, we love working with homes. So we like cultivating identities. Um, a lot of our clients are uh, local. A lot of them are Cebu grown, home based um, here. So you'd probably be familiar. So a lot of them are restaurants, retail, cafes. We also do furniture. So we did furniture design and manufacturing for these, just I'll avoid saying names, but there. And um, so these are some of the articles that have been written. Um, about the firm um, all throughout the year. So we've been very blessed to have um, met people who were willing to feature, I mean, who, who came up to us and uh, asked to feature our work. So this has been um, validation also, you know, for, for me as a young architect um, venturing out into the practice that used to be just me and then there's three, and then they and then became three of us and then we grew off from there. So. As you can see, um, earlier I mentioned about multidisciplinary design. So this is where um, my passions uh, revolve around. Um, in to bring us back to the topic on organizing your space, I'd like to show you this transformation. So uh, this project I did with Axie, who's here right now. Um, this is photographed by Ray, by the way. Ray Cabradilla, who also did the talk. She is our official photographer and she's responsible for like 90% of the amazing photos that you'd probably see here and the photos that I showed earlier. So um, she's in Manila. She's based in Manila now, but every time she's here, I try to catch her so she can still shoot <laughs> for us. So this, um, this is a, this is, this used to be a shoe store, Suelas in Makati, and we transformed it into a, a mid-century modern um, minimalist nail and lash studio there so um this is um this is the post um i really don't know what's with this post but this post as you can see reached seventy-seven thousand shares and eighty-seven thousand reacts so um i mindlessly posted this photo as soon as i got it from ray when i was having dinner in vanilla Mm, I didn't even really curate the photos. I just looked at them in the thumbnails, ate dinner, and when I went back online, um, in an hour, it had 3,000 shares. And in about a week, our 300 followers on Facebook grew into 30,000. And now we have uh, about like 50,000 followers, which is crazy. And we'd still get queries in our inbox about this project up to today, especially this ECQ for some weird reason. So... Um, What's so what's 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 such a big deal about this post? It was this post that I realized that design actually matters to people because um, people say design is a luxury. Some people say design is personal. Not everybody can afford design. You know, hiring architects is just for the rich. People say that, but it was here that I actually felt, because especially when you read the comments, um, there are people who tag their boyfriends, people who tag their their moms. <laughs> People who tag their cousins or their husbands, and then they say, "Oh, beb, ganito gusto ko," or they go like, "Ma, ang ani at buhato." And so we, it's funny. It's, you can really peek through them. You know, sometimes when people tag people, they don't really, they don't really remember that people can see their comments. But yeah, apparently, design matters to people, and everybody actually wants a good space. So. Um, Oh yeah, going back. So this is the old exterior of the building and this is the new exterior of the building. 
this is the living room. And then this is one of the bedrooms, one of the girls. And this is the boys, the, the youngest boys' bedroom. Uh, one of the restrooms, this is the, the girls. There are two girls, so they share this. Now there are two basins because they used to, they used to ha inhabit this uh, really cute pink bathroom. <laughs> when, oh, uh, really, when they were young. And then now that they're adults, they're both in college. So we kind of upgraded a little bit and placed this thing so they don't fight. And for lounging, we added, um, they have a lot of books and it's very cluttered. So we decided to transform this into a, an open bookshelf and add a couch so it, they can make better use of the space. So for, the, for where they cook, we placed a, we read in the kitchens and changed uh, lighting, changed the countertops, removed the tiles on the wall, updated it a little bit. And for the dining, since um, they're a typical Chinese family, they have, a, they have a Lazy Susan in their table. So we made a, made a more contemporary version of that. And we tried to add windows. We punctured the wall, um, added a cove, added this glass wall at the left. Uh, on the left, this is the family room, so to make it a little bigger because it used to be a mirror there. So you'll probably see me <laughs> in lavender trousers in one of the photos and the rest are clients there. So now the question is, why do we organize? Why is organizing, why is, why is organizing important to people? Um, this is one of my favorite quotes. Um, this is, I, this, I have this in my notes actually. And when I was typing this, I didn't even have to Google it. It just really popped out in my head because I memorize it. And it goes like this. It is architecture's task to render vivid to us who we might ideally be. Um, what's your understanding of, what's your understanding of this? Um, for me, it's, architecture has the potential to make us feel like we're doing good. Architecture has the potential to make us feel like we are where we need to be. I remember my first, uh, my first week as an intern when I worked in Ayala Land. I made sure that <laughs> I went to like, a corporate office because it was what I wanted at that time. And then I remember walking out of the building and feeling like I had everything going for myself. And I blamed architecture for that. I blamed the building, I blame the landscape all around Cebu Business Park um, for, for all those things that I was feeling. I remember the first time I was finally happy about remodeling my room. I went to bed, fairy lights are on, I had my diffuser on, and I was saying that I'm gonna, I'm gonna, get, a, I'm, I'm gonna get a good sleep tonight because this is finally how I want it to be. So there. Sometimes it's, it's a self-image, but sometimes it's also aspirational. We make our spaces look how we want our lives to be like. Also a quote from um, Dr. Sally Augustine, PhD. Seeing clutter all around us is, us is mentally exhausting and makes us feel tense. Now, I'm going to chat with you here for a little bit. Who among you... <laughs> Who among you here? I can't really see the chat. There, hang on. There. Who among you here feel stressed when your oh okay, balikon talang ako. Who among you here don't feel stressed when your space is bubut? I can read it to you, Don. If you can't see the chat, I can. I can see it already. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Can any, I'm going to give you um, five seconds, five. Be strong and be brave. If you don't, if you don't, you know, if you don't feel bothered that your space is gobot and it doesn't affect you, please say I. Five, four, three. You get so stressed. <laughs> I don't feel super stressed. Okay. I feel stressed sometimes. All right. Stress, gobot. See, it varies from person to person. Anxious and depressed. See, so it's, it's, it varies, you know, there are levels to it. Some people get very affected, like me. The very first thing, it drives me insane. Okay, there's a level of gubut and stress that stresses me out. Doesn't spark joy. 
right? Um, specifically, if it happens at work. Yes, some of us aren't able to work if it's gobot. So the first thing I did, the very first week that we were on ECQ was fix my room. I mean, if I'm going to live here for 24 hours a day and work here and eat here and all of that, then I might as well make it good. There's organized chaos. Yeah, that's true. Now, um, okay. Can I ask you, why are you here tonight? Don't really have peace of mind when I'm not happy. Anyone? What made you, well, what made you, aside from supporting me, friends. <laughs> so what made you here tonight? A lot, I know a lot of us here are, some of us are from the design industry. Some of us are homemakers. Some of us just want to make good of their personal space. Need to Marie Kondo our stock room. Oh my gosh, I did that. I learned to learn how to make my space look and feel better. Yeah. So, you know, I started with my room and then I eventually I eventually moved on to um, creating new nooks in the house because there are six of us and our house is not going to get bigger throughout the ACQ. So I had to adjust, add, add nooks so we won't feel too tight. And then eventually... Our, we cleared our maid's room, which now became a music room and everything like that. So it's an upgrading process and I keep doing it because it makes me feel exhilarated. And it might not be the same for everyone, but it, I, I'm sure everybody agrees here that it is important. It is um, essential and has effects to your mental and emotional state. Most common spaces. I purposefully left this blank. Because I want you to, back to picture the slide with photos of your own space in it, okay? So let's imagine for a bit, how does your living room look like? How does your sleeping quarter look like? How does your working space look like? And how does your cooking and eating space look like? Okay. Okay, na? You've imagined it, na? I'm gonna ask you, where do you spend most of your time when you're at home? My sleeping space and working space are in one space. Exactly. That's why I didn't say room, Julian. <laughs> I think there's a certain way to achieve this kind of organization. It's more than arranging. That's true. It could be essential. We need or we don't need the bed. <laughs> right, the bed. Okay. So whatever that space is, start there. Bedroom, living room. See, it's different for everybody. So, so that you have a concrete area that you can apply this, these tips on, I want you to imagine that space as we progress. Now, um, I'm not Marie Kondo. I'm just a, just a practicing architect who loves organizing, even my own space. And I've compiled my 10 tips on how to organize your space. So how do we organize? Number one, evaluate. Evaluate. Um, number one, what is your space's existing problem? Think about it. Is it that it's too tight? Is it that there's not enough storage? Is it that it's too dark? Is it that it's um, not cozy enough? We all have our different problems and solutions don't happen when there are no problems. So that's the good news. So determine what the problem of the space is. Next, determine your existing conditions. So not all, uh, when we do site visits, whenever there's a project, um, we usually head on to the site and do an ocular because if there's anything I learned in my years of practice is that not all design solutions are applicable to all problems because it also matters what the condition of your site is. So for example, um, okay, later na lang di ay. I'll show you because I have pictures. Next is your limitation. So what's your limitation? Is it the size? Is it budget? For a lot of us, it's budget. Is it that you cannot really demolish what you have in your house because somebody else built it for you or you're just renting. You cannot really go buy your whole cabinet and make a new one that will fit your needs. There are limitations. And then number two, um, what are the things in it? So now that you're done with the space, you look at the things that are inside the room. So is it trash or is it treasure? Evaluate it. So I'm going to take you to one of my projects. Um, one of my very first projects. So this is a this is a um, retail slash office slash production house. This is a company that um, 
advocates for Philippine uh, for local weaves and to rinse them into beautiful products, textiles, and um, all of their merchandise, clothes, things like that. So, see, this is a warehouse, and the limitation to this project was budget. Um, and secondly, it's made of drywall. So we wanted to introduce a lot of storage because they told us that they have problems with a very big inventory and a, very, a lot of SKUs. And we wanted to house those things through uh, closed shelving because it's, I mean, closed cabinets so that it doesn't look cluttered. But the walls are soft. And if we broke the walls, we would have to spend more for erecting the walls back again. So because we couldn't, because the walls were soft, and we couldn't puncture on the wall, then we had to make use of mounting on the floor. Well, the floor was concrete, so we had to make freestanding items, or we had to, we had to, the ceiling was also just a ceiling. There were no trusses, because their ceiling was just made of firing, because it's like a, it's like a warehouse inside a basketball court or something like that. So the only, the only sure structure there was the, was the floor, so it's, everything had to be freestanding there. So this was their reception area here. And then this is this is before and after. And then this is their retail space where they store the fabric. So there are a lot of divisions. Now, the beautiful patterns weren't really showcased. Well, sayang, no? It's very vibrant. And then each pattern represented a tribe in the Philippines. So we, we made it this way so the patterns are showcased enough. And we made it into rollers so they can just remove it. Because the fabrics arrive in rolls, they can just punch it through the rod. And then when they cut, they can just roll it out. So it's not always, it's not just about form, it's also about function. And oftentimes I'd like to add, it's also about meaning. So it's about creating meaningful spaces for people, uh, for, for the people that inhabit it. So you, when you evaluate, you ask yourself why you occupy your space. Why do, why do you embody that space? Why are you even there in your couch where you're listening to me right now. So why? And after you ask yourself why, do you meet that purpose? Because if not, then what is your space for? If your bed is there, it's for sleeping, it's so you can rest and rejuvenate, and it's filled with piles and piles of clothes, so then your, per your bed is not exactly serving its purpose. So that's what I'm talking about when I say meaning. And then the photo here below, um, this used to be their production area. So it's the same space. The, the issue was lighting. So here on the other, in the other photo, this is where we placed, uh, we hung reflectors from the very high ceiling. We added windows so there's natural lighting so they don't have to spend too much on electricity. And we added shelves using old plywood that we salvaged from destroying all the other display, uh, display, display shelves in the retail area. So we recycled them. That's why they're thick because they're only plywood and we just made a metal frame for them. And then that's where we placed all the boxes and all the bins there. Okay, so, um, right. Number two, purge. So now that you've determined trash versus treasure, those that are treasure, if they really are treasure, then you decide to keep them. And those that are trash, you turn them to cash if you can. Luckily for a lot of us, there are many avenues for people to, to make money out of trash. It's not, it, what, what is trash to you may be treasure for others, you know. Um, so there are avenues like garage sales, there are avenues like carousel. I'm not, click the code below if you'd like to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So there are a lot of avenues. Some people even sell on their Instagram. I know uh, I have interns who, who sell their own clothes on Instagram um, and they shoot it really nicely. And there are also some who, who, who do not want to sell it, do not want to do brooches, do not want to do pop-ups. Um, they donate it because the more you give, the more you receive, right? And um, also set your, uh, wrong spending, set your sentiments aside. So when you, you have to be heartless, you know, my sister and I have this term, like, okay, go decide, Annie, be heartless. Because sometimes our sentiments really get in the way. I mean, we can't help it, we're humans. But let go of what you don't need. Because most of the time, if you keep it just because you're sentimental about it, the next few months, you do your decluttering again, you see it again, and I'm like, oh, I forgot about this again. And then this, 
it's gonna happen over and over and then it's just gonna be there you're not gonna use it could have been more useful in somebody else's home next is declutter your mind and tidy up your life so again that was number one evaluate number two purge number three organize this is what i'm very excited about because i don't know if it's my tita my, my evolution to the tita hood but this is really what keeps me excited about um, Shopee <laughs> or Lazada or SNR uh, or Landers. You know, this is the bomb. So organize. Choose from a plethora of tools. So there are plenty of tools. Uh, architecture students and art students know this. There are open shelving, closed, and combination. So these are three. There is a kind of storage solution for every need, which I will go into later. And then there's also the, there's fixed, and then, so that's fixed, right? And then there's plug-in. Cunning plug-in, this is what I just recently discovered because, because of my profession, I'm so used to doing fixed solutions. And growing up, I've always wanted to change my cabinet, you know? I've always wanted to add lights. I always wanted bigger. I wanted to have drawers because I didn't have drawers for socks and undergarments and things like that. But then I discovered plugins. These are things that you can actually insert in your existing cabinets to make you maximize it even more. Next is group things using containers and trays. This is very valuable. Next is um, recycle and then next is use labels. So I'm gonna show you photos for better understanding. Open shelving. So See, open shelving is very pretty. A lot of the shabby chic homes, the country homes, use open shelving. Now, while this is pretty, it's also very tricky because a lot of us are really good. Like, a lot of us are really cluttered. So, only use open shelving when you are confident that you can make the open shelving look nice. Okay? Or if you have tools or if you have um, mini bins that can actually help you organize the open shelving. Remember that slide I showed you of Antel about their production area? So that was like that way because it was cheap. But also eventually when we progressed on, they realized that it can, because it's a production area, it can get really dusty. So they had to incorporate um, boxes with rollers. Sometimes it's a trial and error. It's an, it evolves you know, according to your need. At that time, we were very happy with just the open shelving because it really met the budget, but eventually it, you realize it gets dusty, so you need to innovate from there. Next is there. <laughs> Expectation versus reality. You know, any cabinet, that's why I get frustrated sometimes because when we turn over a project to a client, it looks like the left, the photo on the left. And then when I visit two weeks after or a month after because we want to shoot their folio, it becomes a photo on the right. This is a true story. I have this client in Manila that, that's also my friend that I love very much. I, I did her studio. She was still single back then and I made her a walk-in closet because she showed me a video of her current closet. She's a designer and it was bursting. So when we did her, when we did her wardrobe, it was, she was very happy with it. She had storage for everything. And then when I went back because we were going to, she just got married and we were going to do her house. Voila, it was just like, just like how it was before, even if they were close. If, even if it was close, when you open it, it literally, literally jumps out and attacks you there. So expectation of reality. Think about just don't do it just because you saw it on Pinterest, but think about your actual behavior, about the actual things that you put in there. And I, I don't know if all of us have just coats to display. Some of us might have polka dots and, you know, patterns, which might get really busy. So those are things that I personally want to conceal. Next is uh, there, closed storage. So when I say closed storage, like this kitchen on the left, this is 100% closed. Now, I think this is very tidy. Um, oftentimes, I ask a client what their behavior is or what their workflow is. And if they're the kind of people who are cluttered and who don't want to see any clutter at all, then I recommend like a closed, closed storage. It, this also helps so that your items don't really get dusty. If you don't like to clean every day, if you don't have a household help, then closed storage works. My wardrobe is 100% closed. <laughs> we don't have a helper, so that works for us. But when I say closed storage, it doesn't mean you can't see what's inside. So because if it's something that you want to showcase, then you can always use glass. If your room is small, you can always use mirrors. So you can play with doors um, to maximize your closed storage even more. So if you see this photo on the very right, 
this is also close. Very clean, very neat. A lot of modern houses use this. And this one on the bottom is another gorgeous, gorgeous. I don't even know if this is a walk-in closet <laughs> anymore. There, next is combination. So, it's actually pretty. This is my favorite. Um, the kitchen on the left, there are drawers. By the way, when you do, when you decide, for those who are starting from scratch or building new houses or who, or who are about to renovate or have set aside budget for renovation for their homes, you can always, um, you can always think about the activity. For example, here, um, the, these cabinets on top, these are most likely swing up because the tendency is you can't reach them. So the, the handles, which are the profiles, are at the very bottom of the cabin uh, of the of the of the cabinet so that it's accessible so you hold it where you can reach it but you can you can make the cabinet high so that it can you can maximize the whole wall but you put the handle at the very bottom so you can still reach it so that's what you do and then you have a little bit of open shelving there so you can showcase your ingredients you know your thyme your rosemary and things like that you have these magnetic knife holders and then here at the bottom, you also have drawers. So some people prefer drawers because you only need, you don't have to organize too much. Sometimes there are pull-out trays that are metal for, for the plate so you can organize them in a good file there. So here, combination Sydney, um, the hung items are open and then the ones at the bottom for the undies and the things that you might not want to showcase are closed. And then on top, their luggages, which might probably be something that they want to highlight, are also open. This photo below, they use both open and closed, but where there's an open storage, they use jars. I'll get to that later. What about for most of us who are not building new houses? Uh, for most of us who are not yet venturing into constructing, because Honestly, construction costs quite a lot and it's not number one on people's priority list, you know, especially now most people prefer to spend their money elsewhere like grocery and bills. So this is where I'm making it more relatable for all of us. Um, these are plug-in storage. So uh, these are just some, you can actually research them yourself, but just so you have an idea. First, hanging shelves. You can actually find hanging shelves in I'm sorry to drop a name, but Mandawe Foam. <laughs> so Mandawe Foam has like a like shelves for like 300 to 1,000. Um, it's there. The screws are there. The tabs are there. So all you need is a drill. So if you don't have access to a drill, then maybe you can skip it. But shelves can really, really be beneficial, especially if you want to maximize your whole wall without constructing something new. If you have um, some, some, some budget, you can always make something standing. But if you don't, then if you have a strong wall, it's made of hollow block, then you can always just drill a shelf into your house, into some of the empty walls or above your desk. Next, next is a mobile caddy. So I actually love this. You'd see this a lot in the salons before, but a lot of us already use this now. Because you can drag it anywhere you go. If you decide to work in bed, you drag it to bed. Talking about this little cart under the desk, so this is the same principle behind mobile bars. Before you really need a fridge and like a bar, but for small, small spaces and condos, they have this cart where they put all their drinks, their, their, their bottles of scotch, and then their ice bin, and then they take it to their room. So mobile caddies are very functional also. Next is um, table organizers for the things that you can't help but place on your desk. So there are things like this everywhere like these mesh ones i found a lot of these in our favorite online shop shopping apps and then because there are things that you need access to you know you can't hide everything as much as you want like sometimes you need access to your pens me i like putting my pens in the drawer because it's still cluttered i i, I want my desk as empty as possible so i put it in the drawer closest to me so when i need to access it i just pull it out and then it's there in a shelf in, in a divider under uh, inside the drawer but for those who cannot stand that and who don't have time to spare to do that you can always use all these other accessories so there are a lot of table organizers you can even recycle if you have cans if you have glasses mugs you know those souvenir mugs that you get from during christmas or 
um, all the, the boxes perhaps from your dream cake, the copper ones, um, plenty of things. The, I have a lot of boxes at home because my mom always receives gifts from companies <laughs> and I always like to collect her boxes and her baskets because I use them as my my planter um, sleeve, like the socks of my pots, so I don't have to buy new pots. Um, I use them to hold all of my leather good maintenance stuff. Um, what, Actually, all of the things that are like this in my room are all like maybe like 90% recycled. So one, I place all my art materials for when I feel like, like doing some watercolor. And then for the vanity also, she had this can that I don't know where she got, but that's where I place all my skincare stuff. So when you group them, they just visually become more organized. So uh, this doesn't just apply for desks. If you see this one at the bottom, this gorgeous arrangement here, this is from somebody's um, vanity <laughs> goals. But yeah, you can use it for... Cosmetics, for makeup, for skincare, you know, for the guys, I don't know what you put in your vanity, but you get the point. So there, um, you expand your space when you add these things, when you add layers. This one's also my favorite here. Drawer divider. So this is what I was talking about earlier when I told you that I, I placed something inside my drawer. So when I pull it out, it has an organizational... Thing. One of them I got from like a Japanese souvenir store. You know how they have pasalubongs, those chickens that taste, I mean, those banana shaped things that are actually cakes or those that look like chicks that are actually cakes. It has a lot of compartments. So I used one of those and placed it in my drawer in my vanity. And that's where I organized my makeup. So I don't have to spend for anything. And then in, in my desk, I have like pencil cases, not very simple, just square. So I open it and I place it under there so that things don't move. So that way, you're more organized. They don't swim inside your drawer. So you find things easier. You see everything. You see what runs out. You see what you have too much of. You know exactly where it is. So there, drawer divider. See, it's very, it looks very clean. Also here, hanging closet organizer. So this was like a recently, like a recent, like maybe two to three years ago find that I found very amazing because a lot of us, when our architects probably design our houses or the places that we're renting in, we have these rods, but not a lot of us have a lot of dresses. So we don't want to hang them. We can just fold them. We can always place these uh, hanging closet organizers. So see here, you can place your, you can even put shoes there or you can put your folded items. So there are a lot of configurations. Um, I've seen a lot of these in Mandal Home. I've seen a lot of them in SNR, SM Home, Our Home. So these, act, these things actually make your wardrobe cabinets more functional. Custom fit your needs. There are a lot of configurations. Some are puro shelves, some are like for bags, some are, some can I holes for scarves. Um, some have these little drawers. I recently just also bought like something like this, but standing version. And that's where I place all my sweaters because sweaters are so bulky and they take up so much of my wardrobe cabinet. And it's so thick and I can no longer place anything there. So I decided to take them all out, roll them and put them there so that I have more space in my real cabinet, my, my real wardrobe cabinet for for the other things that are more lightweight and the ones that I use more often because I don't really use sweaters a lot. Next is um, shelf dividers. So these, are, these things are good because if you have a shelf, there are times that it's not exactly the height that you want it, like the height, or it's not exactly divided the way you want. So if it's, you can actually manipulate this vertically and horizontally. So if it's too high, uh, you can use this one on the right. See, so this one, it's just one shelf, but adding a level to it gives you like two shelves instead of one. We have something like this in our restroom, uh, in, our, in our bathroom, sorry. So there's a long vanity counter, and then we used to just put everything there, and then we found this, and now there are two layers. So then there are two shelves that we just place right on top of our counter, and that's where everything else, so everything is. So like all of the things that we don't use go under, and all the things that we always use are on top. 
So that's how we divide it uh, vertically. Now, you can also divide it, uh, see this, this one also, see? So taas, ihang shelving. So if there's a big gap there, there's a big height. So uh, they place storage boxes in the middle. Stackable ones are really good. So they can put this. I also did this to my shoe area. I have this just one flat shoe area. And when I was younger, it was enough. <laughs> but now that, I was, that, uh, that I'm growing older, I have a little bit more shoes. So I had to put boxes like this. In fact, I always put it in my Instagram stories. And every time I put it on my stories, a lot of people always message me where I got it. I found this, what, how, how high is it? Like 0.70. Okay, most people speak in feet. So maybe it's three feet. No, sorry. Two feet by three feet. Something like that. And it, ha it, it houses like 30 pairs of shoes. So it's very small, but every small box has like a diagonal thing that goes up. So one shoe goes down and then when you do this, one shoe goes up. So that's one box. So it's like a pigeonhole. So, so be on the lookout for things like this because uh, back when you were younger, I couldn't care less about these things. I'd rather go to the food section, but now like this really make me happy. So here, shelf dividers. See, this is just like a piece of plywood that you slit. Um, one of our designers actually sent this to me because we were going to use this for a project. Uh, the house that I told you about my client who was just newlywed, the designer one. So yeah, for her storage solution. So you can cut up sleeves, you can groove it, and then you can cut like a thin ply, like one fourth, or you can even use cardboard and you can put them in between so that automatically your items are sorted out. So you can do this for files as well. Here in the bottom, we have like bag storage. And then here on the right, this is just made of acrylic. So see, you don't even have, you don't even have to redo your entire cabinet. You just have to get one of these dividers and then insert it right smack in the shelf. I also bought one from Ikea before. It's this, um, there's like a leather strap and then there's like a fabric. So you just clip it on one of the shelves above and it drapes to the bottom. So your bottom shelf has two, two shelves now. So it's about, Creativity lang, and it's just, um, use your imagination and maximize what you have. Next, group things using containers. So this is what I was saying earlier. Um, this is great for open storage so that it's more organized. So like this one on top, so you can use jars. You can use um, canters, you can use those little plastic containers. You can also, another tip the I is also look for places that were once useless. So when I grew my, like when I grew my bag collection, I had nowhere to place my bags because everything was full. So what I did, I found a space under my bed. <laughs> and like this one here, that's why I really attached an image because I found a space under my bed because my bed is suspended. I mean, it's open at the bottom. So I bought storage boxes and placed them there. I aligned them all there and that's where I placed them. That was before I got my, the, the, the shelf I ordered from Tavla. So there, but I still use it for a lot of things. Or it could be the little space above your cabinet, the, the space between the top of the cabinet and the, and the ceiling. So you can put boxes there as well for the things that you don't really access all the time. Because Shampra, it's hard to reach. Another thing is you can also use trays. So I cannot, I have so much trays. Like I tray everything as much as possible. Um, my candles, my anything, uh, my skincare, I keep saying this, but even your materials, like your cooking materials, see? Um, here you can find vinegar or vinaigrette, balsamic, and all these things. So imagine if you remove the tray here in the kitchen photo. So when you remove that, it's visually cluttered. I mean, even if you arrange it well, it just, it just looks like you just place it there mindlessly. But if you put them on a tray, not only can you remove everything better and bring it to the, to the cooking area, you can just also, it, it really looks more visually organized. And sometimes that's what's important, you know. And then here at the left, we also have bins. So bins can vary. Sometimes it's the same principle as baskets. So it can be woven, it can be paper. I know a lot of stores sell paper versions of this of all sizes. And now there are also these mesh things. 
um, like wire meshes are very in nowadays. Tin can looking ones are very in. So, you know, those things that you get from, like I always say, cookies and cakes. Like those, are, those like make really good storage um, solutions that can help you save some money there. So next Christmas, when you receive presents, um, be mindful of keeping the trays. <laughs> you never know when you'll reach for them. Next, I spent a lot of time there, huh? Next, um, arrange. Wait, I'm just gonna move this chat box because I can't see my own slide. Sort and arrange. So sorting is a category, oops. Is sorting is a cat categorizing things that have a common feature. Uh, my advice is to sort things according to your function, accessibility, and zoning. So I didn't realize how important this was until I did it for myself. So if it's something that you reached for before bed, like your diffuser, your candle, your book, um, what else, your earphones, put them on your bedside. So instead of opting for like a bedside na open, why don't you opt for something that has a drawer so you can have additional storage? So you put them where you need them, your charger, your power bank, all that. In your desk, um, all the files that you reach for often, put it there. Um, if you like doing your makeup in your bedroom, which you most, most of us do, so that's where you place it. But if you, want to, if, you want to, if you usually apply your, let's say your face mask, sorry boys, if you usually apply your face mask or your cleanser, um, in the bathroom, then don't put them in your vanity. Put them in your bathroom. So put them where you can access them all the time. So sort them according to function and accessibility so that it saves you time. And time is money. Time is of the essence. So zone them. Um, group them according to their function. Next is arrange. Put things in a neat, attractive, and required order. Um, this is the definition of arrange according to Wikina. So section off things and make sure to see them clearly. I don't know about you, but my OCness gives me anxiety attacks when I can't remember my inventory. <laughs> so like, I make sure that I see everything. I want to see all of my clothes. And I'm surprised because Marie Kondo actually also said this in one of her videos. That when you, it gives, it gives you more peace that you know what you actually have so you can appreciate them better. So I arrange them in a way, sometimes it's according to height, sometimes it's according to use. So all of my ointments here, all of the hair care products here, all of the lotion here, all of the makeup on this side. And so it, depending on your lifestyle, if you're an artist, then you, you group them according to that way. All of your digital stuff on this side, if you're, if, you're a, if you're a podcaster, so group all of your equipment, put them on little containers, make a proper container and pouch, use a pouch for your wires put them in a box beside you because where you usually film and things like that. So it really depends from lifestyle to lifestyle. If you're in the kitchen, um, group all of your cooking materials where your stove is and group, uh, group all of your slicing materials and uh, your slicing materials where your chopping board is, which is close to your sink because that's where you will wash your meat and where you will wash your vegetables. And you can also group your your pantry the same way you know if you put your things in the pantry you put them overhead so put them where you access them the most so if you have ingredients for drink you have chia seeds and things like that then put them in jars and put them close to your blender and then if you have a kitchen you zone it also so there's cooking washing and prep so this is how we arrange restaurants too it's a triangle so your cooking goes on one side all of the cooking materials there your sink here where, where there's water um, so it's heat and water and all of your dishwashing things are on that side. If it's available, that's something you can do right now. And then on the prep side where your big slicing area is, that's also where you put all of your prep materials there. So, and then also, of course, this is the fun part. It's arrange things in a neat and attractive and required order. Attractiveness is subjective for people. It varies from person to person. So I cannot really tell you how to make it attractive. But the general rule is always use the uh, rule of proportion, um, of use the color wheel, complementary colors, um, monochromatic colors, things of the same shade, of the same size. So that's the part where you get creative. So if you think tonight, you think about how you work, how you bathe, how you sleep, and you find a way to adjust your space to aid you do those things more efficiently and 
when you've thought of a way how to do that, you arrange them in a way that's pleasing to you. Next, <clears throat> save space, study space savers. Now, space is one of the best luxuries we can ever afford, especially now that we are in this pandemic. Grab it. Um, with all the social distancing happen, space is luxury. Now, not all of us have space. So how, what we can do, though, is we can maximize what we have. So first rule is digitize what you can. For those who are working from home, if you can digitize them, if you can scan them, if it's something you can just keep in your computer, your laptop is the most space-saving thing in the world because you don't longer have to file a lot of paper. Your laptop is a file room in itself. So small, get, look for small things that pack a punch. Uh, just like the shoe rack that I told you earlier. Um, do not underestimate the power of a white space. So to some, a blank space is sayang, but for me, it's luxury. If I see a nook that has nothing on it, because all the things that I need, they already start on the other corner, that's luxury for me. If I can leave it empty, I can put a plant there, then that's luxury for me. So it's, white space is luxury. That's why people, layout artists, they have black and white space. And they always put white space so that there's balance in the pages that they lay out. When you look at magazines, or not newspapers because that's very full, but when you look at magazines, there's always white space there. So it's essential. Next is use multi-purpose smart furniture and non-bulky furniture. So like this Ottoman here, a lot of Ottomans now, you can sit on them and then you can take out the top and then put something at the, at the bottom. So you can put your blankets there, you put your pillows there. And then this table here is square and then you just stuck the stools right inside so when you're not using it, it just looks like a table but then when you take it out then you can actually sit on it there are smart furniture sometimes they cost quite a lot but they can really save space so like this one's on the right this table i didn't include na lang those beds that can double as wardrobes or you know there's a lot of these things um those that actually fold up, those that actually slide. So when you can afford it, look into those things to help you save space. We've also tried doing like a, like a media cabinet and then you can just slide perpendicularly the desk. So if you want to work, you can do that. And then when you're not working, you can slide it back in and it completely disappears. So there. Also, use elements that make spaces look big. So some of these things are light colored walls, um, mirrors. I cannot explained it enough. The moment I placed a huge ass mirror in my room, it really made the space look big. And it all, because it reflects what you see, so it gives it more depth and more dimension. And also, um, if you don't want to put mirrors because you're scared, <laughs> a lot of people are scared of mirrors, um, use reflective surfaces. So talking about um, glass or anything that shines, anything that has sheen because it automatically makes your, it reflects light, thus making your space look bigger. Okay, there. Next. So number five, these are mostly organizing tips. Now, six to ten is something different. Six is light it up. There are two kinds of lighting, and I encourage us all to use both. Natural lighting, which is free, the sun, and artificial lighting. So natural lighting, if you have a window, make use of your window. So um, activities that you use. If you want to wake up to the sun's heat so that you can wake up in the morning, put your bed close to your window. If you want to work with a bit of sunlight so you don't need to use a lamp, then put it near your window. If you want to have breakfast in the morning and enjoy the vitamin E, then put your breakfast near your balcony or put your breakfast table near your sliding door or whatnot. But if you don't have natural lighting, then you can always use artificial lighting. So there are kinds of artificial lighting. There's general, focal, accent, and task. General is like the usual light that you see on your ceiling that lights up the whole thing. So most of our houses have this. Funny enough, a lot of the houses, the houses that we renovated in the 90s have just one light in the middle. And it's, it usually comes in a form of a semicircle and it has a glass on top. And I don't know why this is always the case, but luckily now, people are fond of pin lights. So I'm personally a fan of um, down lights in the corners. Um, there are many tricks to this. So you can play with the voltage. You can, you can play with wattage, with, with color. Some, some bulbs you can even just, now you can manipulate it. Just one bulb, you can make it warm, you can make it cool, you can make it day. Okay. And the next is focal lighting. So focal lighting is 
where you, if you want to emphasize things, like if you have an artwork, like for example, these shoes. So if you want to highlight something, if you have, if you're into, if you're an art collector, so you shine, you, you make sure that that place is lit. Um, we as humans are inclined to lighting because that's just our genetic uh, makeup. We love light because we were born with it. And what we can do is that when the light is gone, when the natural light is gone, is we, we mimic this into our spaces so that it makes us feel comfortable. Accent lighting, this is for cove. So ever saw those um, cove lights behind the sofa, behind the cabinet, behind the drawer, or in your, those little coves that you see on the ceiling. So us in our firm, we love these things. A lot of times our electrical contractors complain <laughs> because we love playing with lighting because we love lighting and we feel like it's really it really highlights but it, if it's if your wall is plain and you even you want to wall wash it automatically it looks elegant even if there's nothing on it um if you have a nice brick texture we like spotlighting it so that it's it shows off and the texture shines through it's not sayang because what's your great painting for if you're not gonna highlight it anyway Next is task lighting. So task lighting, just like the light I'm using now, is like a desk lamp. It's the, it's the light that's under your kitchen cabinet. But you have an overhead cabinet in the kitchen. The light that's under there is your task lighting. So these are the kinds of lights that help you do your activities better. So an example here, upper right is the window where there's a very crisp, nice cast of natural light. On the left, this shoe store, you'll see the you'll see the cove light at the ceiling, and then you can also see the cove lights behind the shelf lighting the shoes. So that's accent lighting, and at the same time, it's focal lighting. Good news is, you know, this is always, always my frustration because my room has just two pin lights, and for a while it was enough. But as I grew, like I got more art, then I really wanted more lighting. So the first time I ever went to an IKEA store. You know where I spent the most time? I mean, it was the light section because I found a lot of wireless lights. Lights that you can just put battery on. Just like this thing here above the wardrobe cabinet. This is wireless. Um, you just There's an adhesive. You just put a battery on it. And then you stick it to the bedroom. Uh, you stick it to your wardrobe cabinet. When you open it, it's, it, it, it has a sensor. And it, it lights up for you automatically. So there are things like these now. Lucky us, right? And another thing that I like doing, because I'm very boho at heart, are fairy lights. So if you don't have, because you need a special, you need a special electrical provision for lights, and you need a switch, of course, but we don't have a lot of that, and it's very tedious to do that. You need an electrician to do that, but I do have outlets. I have outlets, a good amount of outlets. So what I do is I use fairy lights, I hang them along my wall, and I plug them. So that way, I didn't need to hire any contractor, and then it lights up automatically. It's dreamy, too. I also did the same for our patio and just recently our music room, our old maid's room there. So look for these things. Keep your eyes open for opportunities to insert lighting features that allow you to illuminate your space without needing to put a wiring on it or connecting it to a switch. So there are a lot of things like this nowadays. You even have those um, diffusers that have lights in them. You have a lava lamp, so you can use like a desk lamp. You can use a floor lamp or this little cute, very cute lamp at the bottom right, that one. So once I had a client and he was asking, isn't, isn't my flat too dark? Don't you think it's too dark? And I was like, it's dark now because you don't have lights on it yet. I mean, you don't have, you don't have the, the lamps yet, but once it's in, then you'll see. That was okay, I trust you. And then when he, true enough, when the project was turned over and then all the lamps were there, the floor lamp, the desk lamp, then he was pretty happy. Seven, the fun part, make it personal. So this is where your identity shines through. Personal touches that spark joy and show off your personality. So here on the left is a very bohemian room um, with the plants and the rugs. And here in the middle is a very clean, contemporary, hotelish room. On the right is a kid's room who is very into Star Wars. Here at the bottom, it's a, it's a musician's room. So I once designed a 
no office. And then there were there were three associates. And while everything else in the office looks very corporate, I left them one wall. And I told them, okay, this is your chance to make your opportunity shine through. So there's three lawyers, right? Two girls, one guy. The first lawyer, she had a world map made out of wires. So she's a traveler. This other lawyer, she used a tree sculpture that was from her grandfather because her grandfather was an old judge. So there's a sentimental value. And the third lawyer hung his electric guitars in his wall. So I love seeing it because even if, if, even if everything else is corporate, there's still a bit of personality in the room that shows when you see it. So look for the things that make you excited because after all, it is your space. So if it's gems, for me, it's plants. I mean, I used, I used to have 10 plants in the room and then eventually they all died one by one and then I just have a really huge cactus and one. So there's just two of them, one cactus and one something else that doesn't really die on me very easily and that really makes me happy. Oh, and I also discovered dried flowers. So I've always lo loved dried flowers, but it's only now that I learned to dry them myself. So when I get bouquets, my boyfriend's here. <laughs> so... Thank you. Uh, I dry them and I give them longer. I give them a longer life. I put them in a bin, like the one of the baskets that I told you about, or an old vase, and I put them where I want them. And that way, I have vegetation in my room. So look for these things and find a way to insert them. Um, so it's not all function, you know. It it also makes your heart beat. Next. Oh yeah, I also had this client who's a doctor, anesthesiology. She had her condo done and she wants it pink. And I was like, are you serious? Because like, you're a doctor and you want to have a pink room. So what's wrong with that? So I, I tried to look for a pink that was mauve because I told her, soon enough, you're going to be a mom and you're going to be married and your husband's not going to want to stay in your pink room. So we found a compromise and made it pink. So it made her happy. And at the same time, it made her husband happy. So these are examples of my works that... Um, we tried to bring out the, the, the character of the space and the character of the owner. So the first one is an artist's cabin. He's not really an artist, but he's an art collector. Like he has a major art collector. And he told me to make sure to use his artworks and pick well. So these were the things that I used. And I, made, I picked the sheets and these vases to match his paintings. So the paintings were the standard. So it's, this is on a mountain. Um, the house is very bulky. So I chose very sculptural pieces. As you can see, the table here, it has heights. It's very lightweight. The legs are very thin. So this is one of the things that can make the space look big. No? You can always, imagine if I place like a big solid table there. Just one big solid table that's like just a box. You know, but it won't be the same. It won't be the same as when you use very thin legs with different heights against a very bulky pack of a piece at the back there. And then number two, here's the bottom. This is an art collector's oriental bedroom. So this is actually client number one's friend. So he loves art and he's Chinese. And it's just the same owner as the one earlier, the one with the Lazy Susan. So I made, I made sure to make it more zen and wooden and natural there. So it has like, and then orange, a bit of Asian colors. This one here is a tycoon's Manila flat. So he's in Manila for business often, and he doesn't really like the cozy. Like, he likes cozy stuff, so we incorporated it in the plush furniture and the soothing palette. But also, you can really see that it exudes sour, so there's crisp lines. Don't mind this big white blank thing, because when we shot this, the, the artwork that he got from his designer friend didn't arrive yet. But yeah, it was leather, and it was suede, and hardwood and heavy drips so there it matches their personality also on the more on the younger side this is a young chef's culinary abode ray also shot this <laughs> hi ray so um here uh this is her flat it is in a roof deck so we have like a vertical garden here at the side where she can grow her own ingredients and then here her pillows had words like brunch eat coffee and then what her she had a little kitchen, open kitchen, where she can host dinner. So this one on the left is her bookshelf, DIY bookshelf, where she places all her books. So she likes to collect a lot of postcards, a lot of books, and a lot of trinkets. So I asked her to bring them out 
all of our collection and all our travels throughout the years and we found a place to put them. And here, this one, the thinking room. So this cuisine here is something she got from her travel. So we mixed it, the decor from the actual functional items. But don't do this if you're really cluttered by nature <laughs> and your kitchen's very busy. And so there. And then here on the right is a... Hi, Jacqueline. Yeah, she was there at the launch. Cairo, exactly. Thank you. Okay, so on the right is the newlywed swimsuit designer's house. So now that she's married, you know, I, I styled for her when we were younger, like we were in her early 20s. I styled for her shoot. And then after that, she made me design her studio slash small apartment. And then now she's moving into a new house. She just got married. And then now we're designing her house. And she obviously wants it tropical. So we incorporated, we incorporated it from her bedroom to her nursery to her walk-in closet. So a lot of wood to remind her of like a resort home, remind her of, remind her of a cabana. So a lot of um, soft elements like weaving, white, uh, uh, washed wood, ash wood, things like that. White walls. So because this is in Quezon City, so it's a very city setting. So at least something, her house reminds her of the beach. Next is maintain it. So I understand, guys, that life will always get in the way. Before I was getting ready for this talk, my room was also a mess. <laughs> it, it, it happens. When we're busy, it really happens. But once we've organized, our task is reduced to basically putting them back where they belong until the next lifestyle change. So really maintain it. You know, it's a conscious effort. Um, also, treat your things with respect and care. When you use your, when you use your laptop, I mean, don't just shove it out when you're done. Put it back where it belongs. And when, you, when you're done sleeping in your bed, then you make your bed because, I mean, respect it. Think of it as a human, you know? Think of it as something that served you. Marie Kondo likes to say um, all, the, all her things has a Shinto spirit. So this is a Japanese mindset. And I think it's actually very beautiful because... It's like you're, all of your things have spirits and then you just pay respect and you're grateful to the, to the thing because it served their purpose. It served you. So there, treat them with respect. Don't just show them because when you respect your things, then you don't dump them on the side. When you respect your clothes, you don't just dump them until they form a mountain. So I think it's a mindset that you can incorporate. And then also think of maintenance. This is very important. When you go back to step one, Think of maintenance. Think of before you apply or before you buy that, before you add to cart. Think of whether you can maintain, whether it's something that you can maintain. Before you offer open shelving, make sure that it's something you can maintain. You know, if it's mirrors, then make sure you can you wipe it every so often. If it's huge as mirror and it's dusty, then it's not going to be nice. So think of, think, always think of the long-term effects of your choices. Be it finished, be it furniture, be it accessories. There. So get into the habit of giving your desk, keyboard, monitor, phones, etc. regular cleanings. So may call it a date with your space. So sitting down to a fresh smelling, dust-free work area improves your mood and boosts your productivity. I don't know how you'd feel if you'd hover your mouse over a dusty table. No, I'm, I'm sure not a lot of us want that. And next, number nine indulge your senses so us at atelier we always believe in multi-sensory design so it's tapping your other senses other than just your sight so of course sight make it visually pleasant and to make it visually pleasant also have enough light so that you can highlight them smell huh, i love this choose a room scent that suits you so you know i learned i learned from my boyfriend that you that malls actually really take time to pick a scent that works for their brand and they really invest in this because this is what they air out to the rest of the mall so as for me my favorite is usually lavender and peppermint so i diffuse this and sometimes i make like those little glass concoctions you made made of essential oils with sticks on them so there pick something that suits you and then also get fresh air in so a blaze at your windows once in a while and let your room breathe. So I used to not do this because I was so lazy to open it, but it's life-changing when you let, let it breathe for you and your plants and your other things in the room. 
Next is touch. Select a texture that's fit for the activity. So if you're somebody with disability, don't choose a very smooth floor because you'd eventually slip. So choose something with a little bit of texture. Um, some people like silk for their pillows because it's better for the skin or it's more antibacterial. Some used with a, those with a slight sheen because it's less, it, it, it's less prone to dust and um, bacteria accumulation. So for your table, if you want, be mindful of how you want your hand to feel when you touch it. So there, um, please your sense of touch. And also, I can't really incorporate taste, but uh, your sound. So pick your go-to playlist for each activity. There's Spotify, there's YouTube, you know. I remember those times and we would burn our favorite songs in a CD. <laughs> It speaks a lot about my age, but you know, we, the, before it was expensive to do this, but now it's basically for free. So why not do that? Me, when I want to unwind, what I like to do is I turn on my scented candle, I put it in the bathroom, I take a bath, and I play some jazz. So that keeps me relaxed. Um, when I go to sleep, I turn on the diffuser, and then turn on the fairy lights, I put on some music, if I don't watch YouTube, and then that's when I go to bed. So be mindful of the textures, the sound, the smell, and the sight. Jazz or bags, both. Okay. Number 10, be mindful. Oh, sometimes when you, like waves, especially now that we can't go out, like nature sounds, waves, all those things, those are also on my Spotify. Playlist. So those also help you sleep better, especially those with sleeping problems. Next, number 10. Hello, your favorite girl, Marie Kondo, is right here. People love her, people hate her, but I believe in her principles. Do not hoard. Consume responsibly. So if you don't need it, don't buy it. And you'll not only save money, you also save space. And whatever you have, it's okay to, to buy it. If, if you have a lot of those things, then fine, but make sure that you use them. And you don't open one bottle if you haven't like, finished the other bottle. Hop from one item to another. And then also take inventory. So make sure that you know what you have so you can appreciate them. And you don't add things like, oh, I need a new, what do you call that? I need a new camera. And then, oh, I actually have this DSLR that I've had from five years ago. I might as well just use this. So take inventory of what you have so that you're not tempted to hoard. And so you also delight in your achievement in buying what you, what you have and being able to get that. Also, um, foster a sense of gratitude. So be grateful for the space you have. Don't abhor it. I hate my space. It's so dark. It's so in it. It's so this and that. So I complain about the hate too, but you know, there's also, there's always a ways to foster a sense of gratitude. Thank God I have a home. Thank God I have four walls. Thank God I can actually add lights to this. I can actually do this so it's more functional. Thank God I have a wardrobe cabinet. I can actually manipulate this to fit my need. Thank God I have a table. I can just add a caddy to it so that it, all my materials are there. I can just add a file cabinet with wheels. So foster a sense of gratitude. And Marie Kondo's one rule in, a one in, one out rule. So if you feel like you have enough, Whenever you incorporate a new one, eliminate the other one. Um, one in, one out. So you don't feel so bad about it. And so you have space for it as well. So mindfulness and responsible consumerism. And so to summarize it, I hope you're not bored. Number one, evaluate. Number two, purge. Number three, organize. Number four, sort and arrange. Number five, save space. Number six, slide it up. Number seven, make it personal. Number eight, maintain it. Number nine, indulge your senses. Number 10, be mindful. And if this is too much for you, you can always hire a professional. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Shameless plug. What's this? Is there a professional organizer in Cebu with Marie Kondo coping style? I'm not really sure, Charm. <laughs> I'm not sure, but there's always architects like ourselves and interior designers as well. There. So, um, same space, more value. Same status, same size, same everything, but more value. 
an organized workspace is um, a time saver. It helps you get more done because you know where everything is and you aren't overwhelmed by visual distractions and you can focus at your task at hand. So it allows you to perform your jobs better. An organized space helps create positive mental energy that can spread to your enthusiasm for your daily duties. So it adds value because you're able to live your life better you're able to carry out your activities, not only efficiently, but enjoyably. You actually enjoy doing it because you love the space that you're doing it in. Be it work or be it sleep. So when you work, you enjoy it. You sleep, you enjoy it. When you eat, you enjoy it. Your spaces uplift you and contributes to your sense of peace. So it serves its purpose. And I don't know about you, but I call that a win. Next, so to end my talk, I just have a little contest. I hope Charm doesn't mind. So, number one. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank Can you, I join? Of course. <laughs> so, this is open to everybody who joined this um, talk. So, number one, choose a nook to organize. Post a photo of your nook before and after organizing it. Number two, follow Kaydon C and Atelier de Aurora, my firm, on Instagram and tag me and hashtag quarantine. Number three, Best transformation wins. So contests will run until next week, May 22. So you have a week. I know it's not an easy job. So that's why we have a week here. So winner to be announced then. I will post the prize on my Instagram tomorrow so that I'm sure that you're following me. <laughs> Ding. Okay. So good luck, friends. You can do it. I hope you all join. And I hope you take it all up on yourselves and challenge yourselves with um, these actionable plans. So thank you very much for this opportunity and I hope you learned something tonight. Thank you. I'm done. All right. Maybe we have questions. Yes. So you guys can, um, yeah, the floor is open for questions. <laughs> I'm <think, laughs> <I'm> very supportive. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Anton is one very lucky guy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a question here. How do you organize in a way that is sustainable? Something that doesn't take too much effort and brain power to maintain every day. Especially, I guess, for those who are busy. So, yeah. For me, um, um, first, okay, let's tackle it um, line by line. No? Sustainable, um, like I mentioned earlier, recycling. Um, you don't always have to buy things. In fact, me, um, when I was a, a lot younger, I didn't really have some savings to spare for organizational tools. So I just used to always recycle. So if we have gift packs or if we have um, um, all boxes from presents, like even those, um, like if you got, I got this, even until now, no, I got this cheese platter for Christmas. It was really pretty. So I used it. So all of the things that you can be very, very, Abdic when you see something that's recyclable. You can also, of course, use sustainable materials like wood. So I think the best, because it doesn't really reduce your carbon footprint, mang good, because these things are already manufactured. It, they're already there. The manufacturing is done. So what you can do is to make it sustainable is to consume responsibly and to make sure that you maximize the use and you use it for a long period of time. And the best way to also be sustainable is to recycle and repurpose. So if you have jars, um, like if you have really nice bottles from your skincare, you can put dried flowers in it and use it for your space. You use it for your desk. And um, actually, it doesn't take the degree of effort that you invest depends on the method that you pick. This just sounds like a lot because it's a lifelong process. It's really a change in lifestyle. If you don't really change your lifestyle, you can arrange it once and then after a month, it's just going to go back to the same way. So um, it doesn't also take brain power because if you practice it, um, it will be out of instinct. And also for maintenance, I would, if you're the type who really doesn't have, um, who doesn't really want to arrange, then you can always opt for clothes, closed storage. The same thing I recommended to my, that, that client who was a swimsuit designer. So closed storage always saves the day because you don't have to think about how you arrange things. Um, you can just put it in, put it off. Shampre, uh, you have to arrange it, but not that often because you don't see the clutter. What's important here at the very onset is you are visually organized. So everything you see around you is 
arranged well and arranged according to use. And if just for me, my personal opinion, I think it's also a worthy investment. Um, I think one day this ECQ, which is almost done, is worth dedicating to your space because the lifelong 